Thanks for staying with us. Why is the PDP important in this conversation? Because the PDP is a major opposition party, the major opposition party. And if we are going to avert a one-party state, as some have said, then we need a virile opposition to ensure that the ruling party, the ruling government is always kept in check. But has that really happened as it ought to? Perhaps not. And perhaps that's why this conversation with Shegun Shohumi is important. He is a former spokesperson for the PDP Presidential Campaign Council. He joins us from our studio in Abuja. Thanks for joining us this morning, Mr. Shohumi. Um, for, against, the, 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 the parties are always going to be there. The governors have spoken, uh, protests have been held, interested parties, stakeholders, it would seem, on either side of the divide are speaking. What is your take in all of these if we are going to avert an implosion in the PDP? Well, thank you very much. First, let me say that um, banish the thought of an implosion in PDP. There is nothing on the table to suggest that that party has not built political resilience to be able to manage itself. After all, all of the parties that were founded in 1998 thereabout, PDP is the only one that has retained itself is won elections, is lost election, and is still standing. Now, to the substance of what's going on right now. Um, political parties are usually aggravated, mostly aggravated twice in their, in, in their four-year circle. When they want to do their local escorts that produces the managers of the parties at state levels, you see a lot of quarrels. People sometimes go to court and all of that. And then when they want to do the one at the national level, which is supposed to help them to move towards um, you know, picking candidates for presidents and all of those governors. and uh, That also brings a lot of, uh, uh, you know, agitation. Over time, not just the PDP, the parties in Nigeria have not really bothered to ask themselves, what is it that makes a particular style of managing political parties difficult to be stable? If you look at the rival APC, the case is not different. Right about now, all you hear them say is, oh, the Supreme Court wants to throw away Bruni, blah, blah, blah. And when you, when you look at it deeply, you get the impression that the political players in the country have not understood that you can't always have a political party made in your image and that some form of give and take is what will make a political party stable. But even beyond the individual, the process must be such that it's reasonably strong to accommodate correct and improve the parties. For the one that you have happening now, a great number of members of the party have been quite uncomfortable with defections, with losing governors, we've lost a BOT member. And I think, I mean, we, we may be looking at what uh, the Buni led uh, NWC or caretaker committees have been for the rival APC. They're thinking, that, okay, we need some traction, we need some energy, and there's a need for us to get something going. And okay, maybe people are saying, oh, we can do more. We can, uh, we, new energy must come in. But if you look at the PDP, the leadership of the party and all of its members have demonstrated again why it's a respected political party, and it should be respected. It's a political party that has a soul. It has the ability to look at the problems. It has the ability to call itself together, and it has the ability to find the most reasonable way to sidestep the landmine, as has happened in this case. There was a desire for some people that secondaries should go for reasons that, you know, bother on some allegations and all of that. The elders, the BOT, the governors from all of them have come together and they have come up with some, if in my opinion, a middle ground where they brought down the date of the convention in such a way that we can now say, okay, rather than just, you know, break it up again as we usually do, run into the crisis of maybe having external forces even interfere, we can go and do a proper convention and let us decide the fate of those who will manage the affairs of the party. It tells you that this party called PDP is a stable party. It tells you it's an organic party. It tells you that it's a political party that is really running a democracy. Now, when you flip it to the other side, you will laugh at the APC, really. If I'm a PDP man. We're almost even envying the effort of Bunny and the way he's been taking members from us, the way he's been giving them a lot of traction and all that. And look at the APC. 
Some people are sitting down there now for reasons best known to them. Well, Basically, uh, they want Mr. to Show send me. their own apple cut. But uh, Mr. Show me. Well, if it fits their agenda. Well, you you have again, said it you earlier. Ask, should a political party... Yeah, you have said it, you know, the no, other time. That, I mean, virtually every political party... Stable, yeah, where virtually every political party will, will have this kind of cycle from time to time. But the question that I would like to ask about that is, forgive my, forgive my naivety here, why does that have to happen if the objective is service? Why should we have rancor uh, every four years, close, or rather, as the ele elections, general elections especially, build up if the, if the objective is to serve. Shouldn't there be a unified purpose of each of the political parties? The PDP in this case. A unified purpose that well, everyone that in buys into. Case, what, what we have seen is that we, we tolerate as much as we can and give anybody that has been given the responsibility some opportunity to you know, drive us. But our eyes are permanently on the ball. And we will always, especially now that we're in opposition, be comparing what we're doing with ourselves with what our rivals are doing. And if we find out or we get the suspicion that for reasons best, we can be bothered, we can be put down to the management of the party or maybe some new traction or energy or, you know, actions and programs, people will ask, are we going to be seated here until we be flat-footed and go into an election campaign without the best of our you know, energy, and that conversation will take place. And because it is a democracy, political parties have contestation of interest. What is important is how they manage to handle these things when they come. And till now, you will see that the PDP has behaved like a party that has a soul. Just oppose it to the APC. In spite of the fact that Adam Ali or Shomale won the, the, the second time for them, they couldn't give him a soft line. They threw him out like it didn't really matter. In but Mr. Show me, uh, let, let's, let's, let's talk government about, government you know, the position. Yeah. Yeah. Just, a second. Just a second. Just a second. Let's talk about the issues raised. I mean, the issues that arose from the meeting of yesterday with the PDP governors and BOT. Um, there are those who would also say, wait a minute, uh, is that what is supposed to happen? Is it, is it, because it will seem like it's a kind of soft landing, so to speak. Not a complete vote of no confidence, but a vote of no confidence, no doubt, given that there is so much agitation, you know, in the party, especially about the performance or not of the chairman of the party. What do you make of it? It's like his uh, exit has been speeded up and slowed down at the same time. Well, you have to understand that leaders of our party cannot but listen to the agitations you saw people carrying placards for and against. You've been hearing a lot of big leaders of the party talk about this issue. What would or should a political party do? Pretend as if those issues do not exist or pretend as if secondos have never done any good over the years and just, you know, just throw him out anyhow or destabilize the party even further. So I think that when it comes to political party management, the APC can come and be schooled in the act of managing contending issues and strong issues from the PDP. Because if you ask PC, me, just, all that needs to happen M for us to Mr. Show me. Nerves, for us to now go set up like they plan to do next week, a convention committee, and from that convention committee, the law does not say Secondus cannot present himself for re-election if he so desires. Okay. And that is a better way to sidestep from an implosion in the party. Okay. Dr. Pose it again, because you, can, you have to compare like with likes. Well, well, right now, I really don't yeah, mind us comparing. In terms of just, just a second. I really don't mind us comparing, but I like us because we really don't have much time. I'd like to, to speak to the contending, the, the core issues. Now, do you think uh, the meeting, the resolution so far reached and the progress being made uh, has answered the question of why there have been so many defections up? of top guns of the PDP from the PDP, irrespective of wherever they go to? Do you think the, the issues have been addressed? Do you think, do you think the, the, the issues, whatever it is, that made them defect from the, from the PDP to another party has even been addressed at all or identified? We, okay. With due respect to those who are criticizing secondus on duly, what can anybody do to stop a governor 
who got elected twice on the platform of a political party from without conscience, dumping his party and jumping elsewhere. I doubt if there's anything Secondus could have done or not done to aid that. So we must understand that whereas the culture of political stability and a conviction of holding on and building your own platform seems to not be too firm in the country, you cannot truly really put that on the head of Secondus. For really, what happened to uh, the guy in Cross River? Did Secondus push him out? What happened to the guy in um, Ubon? Did Secondus push him out? What could Secondus could have done to prevent Joy Emodi from leaving? She's BOT. That's the highest it can be. But I'm saying to you very frankly, the difference between the PDP and the APC is that our conflict resolution mechanism... There, there are those... Has just one second, Mr. Shomi. There, there, there are the, those who would say to you... Just a second, it, Mr. Shomi. There are those who would say the that the reason for leaving should be addressed, given that, wait a minute, these aren't just ordinary members of the party. These are top members of the party, significant government officials, just as you have said. So... Uh, if those issues are not addressed, I mean, there is, it's not something that's happened in every political party like that. This one is quite iconic. It does happen, but this is quite iconic. I mean, three governors, a, a member of the BOT, and several others, they always go with their, with, their, with their massive following. What, in your opinion, could have been responsible for that mass exodus, so to speak? To a, 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 you know, some of them would tell you that they're looking at, they're doing their calculations. Some of them want to be vice president without even waiting for the zoning to take place. Some of them want to be president. Some of them are moved by their own unabridged ambition. Some of them love what's going on in the opposition party. There are one million and one reasons why people leave political parties. People will leave from APC for reasons that they Just like. A people will leave you don't from think it has anything to do the with the political issue party is management? Political parties are not... You don't think it has and anything not, to do with know, the management like, uh, of the party? Monasteries, where everywhere is quiet. Just a second, Political Mr. Shomu. Political parties Just a are second. places where these contestations take place from time to time. Agreed. But when they take place, what yeah. is important is how do they handle them? Okay, exactly. So, do you, you don't think that these exodus of these individuals from the PDP has anything to do with how the party has been run or not? I think, look, you may, we must be careful not to call a dog a bad name to hang it. There are other issues you can pin to secondos. Some of them can bother on the allegations around money, which my friend Kazim Afegbu is talking about, and the FCC will have to help us look. Some of them can, be bother, can bother on the way maybe they're not putting in enough energy and grit into the management of the opposition, and maybe the expectations of the people, and probably also interests that are various with their interests. But the critical question you will ask is that, what can any national chairman do to prevent someone as high up as a governor giving our philosophy in PDP where we run that the governor is always the leader of the party in the state? What can anybody do to prevent him from leaving? If a governor leaves, <laughs> I, I, I think that you will have to look for his reason for leaving outside the NWC and the secondus person. And okay. that does not mean that maybe Secondus has a clean bill of health and all of that. No. I'm sure the, the, the like I said, the difference between the PDP and the APC is that we have a soul. They don't. If it had been the APC, what you would have had now that they would have not chopped off his neck, they would pretend as if he's never done them any good before. They wouldn't even check whether some of this soft landing helps them not to implode. And don't forget, politics is a funny game because people always remember to do their own payback. APC right now is in a situation where they're harassing someone that everybody that is not in their party thinks is doing well for them, which is their, their caretaker committee. They've taken governors, they're taking people, they're going all over the place, they're doing so much. But then again, you can see the APC people are harassing him. And if they succeed in harassing him, they're going to then ask them, for what reason really? They've gone to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court have told them that, okay, those, those, those issues are not issues. But yeah, it's not going away. I'm making this point to show you that the political conversation and the ideological underpinnings of political parties in Nigeria is still very weak. Okay, Instead on of that, us to look at the system, on that, on instead that, of us to look at the process, on, on that, we're Mr. always Shomi. fixated on the individual. 
on, on that that we have just said now, the political philosophies of the parties are weak. Do you think there is a lacuna in the law that makes that happen? There are those who allude to the fact that uh, the law permits any uh, one who wants to defer from one political party to another to do so willy-nilly. Do you think that is part of the reason why these philosophies of the political parties are weak? Jumping from one party to the other truly does not have anything to do with the philosophy of those parties. When we say the philosophy, the underpinnings are very weak, is that if you are truly a socialist, it will be extremely difficult for you to just wake up the next day in the morning and become a conservative. And if you are truly a conservative, it will be extremely difficult for you to wake up the next day in the morning and become a socialist. But the world itself is a little bit blood now. The ideological underpinning is blood. And therefore, right now, we're creating a cult of human personalities, especially our rivals. I keep pointing at them because you have to understand that Unlike us, between 19, 1999 to date, we're just having an issue with secondos now. And even that issue we have with secondos, we're likely going to manage it up to convention. The guy that won an election for them in 1999, in 2019, forgive me, is, is Adam where is he now? The guy that they brought in to manage the rot and have stabilize it is Bunu, and I tell you, he's doing some good job. They're about now to even chop up his head. So I'm showing you that whereas we have a way of having a party that has a soul, we have a way of making sure that nobody is too hot. We have a okay. way of making sure that we can come free now. We have a way of making sure that our party processes can be democratic. You okay. will not you will compare with our rivals who do not care how the last man that helped them or the president man that helped them is being treated. And right, at Mr. the end Shogun. of the day, what you see with them is that it mm. creates a core personality where they're looking to undermine themselves without being, you know, honest enough to say that's what they're doing. Okay. And as well as the PDP, I'll just but, say, we yeah. take the responsibility that we're the university that they learn from, and therefore we always, you know, take the high moral ground. And okay. we've done that again in this case. Yeah, Mr. Shomi, um, you, you've also raised another issue, you know, critical issue, uh, underpinning uh, issues of uh, party philosophy. And then you have also talked about the absence of that being responsible for individuals making up the party, so to speak. Uh, and of course, naturally, that speaks to the fact that we weaken the institutions to strengthen individuals. And it affects the leadership recruitment system for the country. How do you think that can be redressed? I think I hold the view that all of us, all the political players, must understand. Political parties are the first safeguards in a democracy. If you do not have stable political parties, you're truly not going to have stable democracy, and that will then impact even the way you form government. Therefore, they should follow the PDP model. When these issues come up, and they will come up, the best way to do it, allow people to ventilate, but have strong institution that can pull them back and say, okay, all things considered, this is the most democratic way to resolve the issue. And I tell you again, proud of PDP all the time. They have done what they know how to do best. They have shown capacity that they can pull themselves back from the brink. And I hope that all my all members now will now calmly begin to look at how to now be party men. It's not always your way or the highway. And I believe that even where sacrifices must be made, if need be, then they must be made. And I think that with due respect to everybody, if we cannot say thank you to Secondos, it is right for us to make sure that we do not embarrass him completely. Because... Managing political parties may look easy until you're sitting on the chair. And when you change the personality, you better be careful that the institution itself and the framework for management has been improved so that you don't come back and say, Osana today, crucify him tomorrow. Well, uh, Mr. Shoumi, that's uh, a, a fine way to wrap up the conversation this morning. Clearly, the permutations will still continue. But for now, we have to thank you very much for being a part of our conversation this morning. Uh, Shagun Shomi is former spokesperson for the PDP Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you so much once more for your time and your thoughts this morning. Th